Welcome to the Business of Design podcast. I'm Cheryl Horn, Director of Operations for Business of Design. Kimberly will be back with a new episode on January 5th, but for today, we're going to air a repeat episode. December has always been a busy month for new members joining our community and existing members setting aside additional time to work on their business. Back in March 2020, we aired episode 155, Drinking from a Fire Hose, where Kimberly addressed best practices for tackling the systems available to you through Business of Design. We admit we do get feedback from new members that the volume of content within Business of Design membership can be overwhelming. But like everything else, we have a system for that. If you're already a member of Business of Design, please join us for the next BOD live meeting on January 13th. We'll be walking through the new Design for Living course, which is part of the new BOD Blueprint program launching on January 6th. So set your calendars for January 13th and join us for Business of Design Live. Until then, happy holidays, happy new year, and we look forward to being part of your success in 2021. Enjoy the show. Hello, hello. Welcome to Business of Design, episode 155, Drinking from a Fire Hose. Just picture that for a minute. You're thirsty, it's a hot day, and someone unleashes a fire hose. You are going to drown. And that is what it can feel like by the time you find us at Business of Design. I spoke to two brand new members of Business of Design this week during group coaching, Jamie King and Rose Arnon. I hope I'm saying your last name right, Rose. I forgot to ask you that. But anyway, I spoke to them on group coaching and said I was going to dedicate this episode to them because it's been a long time since I was newly indoctrinated into the systems and strategies that I use. And so it's good for me to remember how overwhelming it can be by the time you get here. And make no mistake about it, if you get here in the first year or two of your business, you are so lucky. If you get here after you've been doing it for 30 years, you have to fight back a little regret, a little time ruminating over time lost. And the sooner you can get that out of the way, the sooner you can move toward the best part of your career, which is going to be the part of your career where you can really become your best creative self because all the systems and procedures, the things that used to make you crazy can all be taken care of conveniently, effectively, and permanently. Permanently. Like imagine that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how do you begin to make changes that will improve your business, particularly when there are so many things that need to be improved. I'm recording this on my way out the door to a three-week vacation, which is something that was absolutely unimaginable to me. I couldn't take three days off without being tied to my email, without being tied to my phone, without constantly checking on what was happening with projects. And I'm now at a point where I can go away for three weeks and know without any reservation that every single project is going to move forward in a streamlined process. I am going to make money while I'm on holidays. And that is incredible to me because I just didn't think it could be done, but it can be done And it can be done for you. You just have to be willing to go through that really uncomfortable period of implementing things that you're not familiar with, you're not comfortable with, you haven't tried them yet. And you are in such a great position because we literally have hundreds of testimonials from people saying, hey, I was skeptical too, but I tried it and it worked. So you don't have to go it alone. You can follow a path. So I want to talk about how do you whip your business into shape in the fastest possible way without feeling like you're drowning because you're drinking from a fire hose. That's a very long title. So let's just call the show Drinking from a Fire Hose. Welcome to the Business of Design podcast with Kimberly Seldon. Business of Design is the world's best business training for interior design professionals like you. We have the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to consistently satisfy clients, increase profitability, and run your projects like a boss. Unlike traditional coaching, POD is a fast track to immediate results. Don't try to do this alone. Join today and you'll have access to hundreds of targeted training modules, plus member perks like BOD Live events, member-only podcasts, preferred pricing, and the support of an engaged community of peers. We all know design matters. At Business of Design, we think designers matter too. 
When I started my business in 1991, I thought I would move swiftly from brand new baby designer to mature, sophisticated, profitable designer in no time. That just didn't happen for me. I simply had no tools for managing the complex situations I found myself in with clients, suppliers, and trades. No tools. I'm a great communicator. I'm a person who believes strongly in integrity. I'm someone who's willing to work hard. And none of those things helped me get where I am today. Not at all. What helped me were systems. Systems that allowed me to create a path for projects so they would run in a linear fashion. Step number one, step number two, step number three. It was an impossible dream when I hired my first business coach. Impossible. In fact, it didn't even occur to me that I could surrender to this concept until I had been coaching with her for more than a year, and it was very expensive coaching. So nobody was more skeptical than me, that's for sure. When people find business of design, they often say, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I needed. I had no idea you were here. Or they think we're new. They don't realize we've been doing this since 2004. And then the next thing I hear is, oh my gosh, it's too much. It's all too much. I I don't know where to start. And so I'm going to tell you two places you can start. One, you can start where you are, which is my method, the method that I used, And that means I found the biggest pain point and I addressed those pain points first. And I'll go into some detail about that. Or you could start with business of design as your master and start at step one and then step two and then step three. I actually think it's easier for you to start with step one, step two, step three. It's instantly gratifying in a way that starting with a pain point I don't think is. Um, Certainly it wasn't for me because when I hired a business coach, she didn't know what the solution was. She just knew how to keep motivating me and pushing me so I would try new things. And I was so lucky because I had a really big staff and so I could try multiple techniques simultaneously. It might have taken me, if I had been on my own, many, many years to get through the number of techniques we tried for every part of the process. So in that way, I was really lucky. So I'll talk about those two methods. The first method being start where you are. For me, my pain point was money. I was drowning in money problems. I didn't invoice my clients in a timely fashion. I was so busy doing all the things I needed to do to keep the projects running that I didn't have time, nor did I have much appetite for sitting down at a computer and doing all that paperwork. And I know what some of you are thinking, you just hire a bookkeeper. Well, bookkeeper didn't know how to do the paperwork either because it wasn't organized. So what happened was I would avoid the paperwork. And so I didn't invoice the clients on time. I played games with invoicing. Oh, she's going to be mad if I send her that invoice. So you know what? I won't send her that invoice this month. I'll put it off till next month. But then the problem became compounded. The invoice now included other invoices and seemed even larger. That didn't work. Or the game that many of us played, and I played it for years. I'm not going to invoice her for all this time because it looks unreasonable or because she's going to be angry or he's going to be angry. So I'm just going to cut this time off. I'm just going to lower this invoice and get it through and hope that they pay me for the lesser amount. And what I discovered was shocking. They still complained about the fees and I still negotiated those fees, further perpetuating the problem. About two years into coaching, not realizing the extent to which I lowered my fees every single month for every single client, my business coach insisted, after many conversations about it, insisted that I actually keep track of how much money I took off every single invoice. I did it for three months, and I can almost feel how sick I felt when I saw the number. I had effectively removed over $100,000 in profit over a one-year period. So we analyzed a three-month period. But when I multiplied that number by four, meaning four quarters, it was over $100,000. I had no idea. That 
would have been, in fact, $100,000 of pure profit because overhead and staff salaries and everything else had already been deducted. It would have been $100,000 of pure profit. I did that for years before I was willing to look at it. Once I looked at it, I couldn't pretend anymore that it was okay. I couldn't tell myself the lies I told myself previously. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll make it up next month. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm building sweat equity. Oh, I'm going to give myself a raise in the following year and it will all be right. I lied, lied, lied to myself while I held myself completely accountable in a really rigid and uncomfortable way to clients. So I was horrible to myself, but wonderful to clients. That wasn't the only problem I had with money invoicing. The other problem I had with money was collecting. In my mind, when I sent a bill to a client, because this is how I am, the bill would be paid. But what I discovered is, in fact, sometimes clients would sit on the bills for a month, two months, six months. And everything came screeching to a halt one day when my husband came to me and said, we're going to have to borrow money to pay the staff. At this point, I had 13 people in the office and we were humming along and as busy as anyone could ever be. Now imagine having a staff that big and still not being very profitable. I mean, anybody in the right mind would have looked around and said, what is going on here? But I was having so much fun. I can't remember who it was, but one of the podcast guests said, it's like being on a rock tour bus and you're all part of this great show and you're traveling around the country and you're having the best time of your life and this is awesome and you're not really paying attention to the big picture and that's really how it was for me. So my husband said, we're going to have to borrow money to pay the staff. And I was just completely shocked. That's not possible. We've never been busier. I had a show on HGTV at the time. We were turning away work on a daily basis. It was insane. I just could not figure out how that was possible. So we had to sit down with my accountant and he said, you have invoiced all these clients. And we're talking about dozens of clients. You have invoiced them, but they haven't paid. What? that's ridiculous. They should pay, (laughs) you know? Yeah, they should, but they haven't. And the reason they haven't is because you don't have any kind of protocols in place to nudge them toward payment and no detriment if they don't pay. And so clients were just sitting on the invoices we were sending for months and months. And then when I finally would say, I need you to pay, now they owe six months in back fees and who knows what else. And they have money and cash flow issues, which they tried to make my issue. So that was huge. The third part of the problem, and there's so many parts of this problem, I won't go into all of them, but the third part of the problem is I did not have good policies around how I got paid, when I got paid, and what the consequences of not getting paid were, not just for billable hours, but also for goods and services. So I've told this story before. I'm not sure if I've told it on the podcast. I had these clients that I really liked, and we had done the whole house, and it was quite a big project for me back then. It was huge. It was $400,000 worth of furniture and goods. And we finished everything finally, And I was so excited. And back then, I don't do this anymore, but back then I used to collect a 50% deposit and then upon delivery, collect the balance. So the balance is big, right? It's $200,000. So we deliver everything. I'm super excited. The client seems super excited. I, I tell them kind of tentatively, you know, I'm going to need you to pay for the rest of this stuff and we'll send you the invoice tomorrow. So that's what we do. We send the invoice and the client says, no problem. I'm going to have my husband, let's call him Joe. Joe is going to send you a check tomorrow. Amazing. I'm so happy. We're out celebrating. Tomorrow comes, the next day comes, the next week comes. I'm like, oh, whoa, hey, haven't gotten a check from Joe. Better check in. Hey, Mary, what's happening? Joe hasn't sent us a check. And by the way, this is all me. I'm the person on the phone. Hasn't sent us a check. What's happening? Oh, he hasn't. I'm going to kill him. Let me get in touch with him. I promise you he'll get it out right away. Okay, thanks. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Bye. A week goes by and you know what happens, right? There's no check. So then I call again and she says, oh my gosh, we're off to Aspen. This is legit. We are off to Aspen with the kids. If he didn't get your check before today, he'll have to get it to you when we come back in two weeks. I mean, can you feel me? I 
At this point, I'm getting scared now. I'm like, oh my God, they're going on holidays for two weeks. They have everything. I have no control over anything anymore. And I'm starting to be a little scared because I actually back then didn't have $200,000 in the bank. And what did I say? Oh, okay, well, have a great time on your holiday. And then as soon as you get back, we're going to need that check. And off they went to Aspen. And I spent a tense two weeks. As soon as they got back, I was on her, like to get paid. And by the way, how does any of that feel? It's so gross. It would be like if you're a school teacher and you have to go to the principal's office repeatedly to beg the principal for your paycheck. It's humiliating. It's horrifying. And nobody should ever have to do this again, by the way. Never follow my bad examples. So anyway, I get in touch with her. How's your trip? Great. Amazing. Oh, by the way, need a check. And she says, Joe thinks there's a problem with the sofa in the family room. I just want that to sink in for a minute. I want you to feel what that feels like. You owe me $200,000 and Joe thinks there's a problem. And Joe thinks there's a problem with the sofa in the family room. Yeah, what's the problem? He says that there's some stitching that isn't right. Oh, stitching. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. If you wouldn't mind paying, I will get the upholsterer to have a look at it. Joe says he's not going to pay until that's fixed. So the penny drops for me, right? And now I'm like a little bit crazed. (laughs) So I'm like, are you telling me you're going to hold back $200,000 because there's some stitching on the family room sofa that isn't right? So now we've gone from great friends and buds and super happy working together to me hating her guts. I can't believe she would do this to another human being. It seems unbelievably cruel. And I have to start jumping through hoops now to make Joe happy and pray he pays me. Oh my God, can you hear how riled up I'm getting? This happened so many years ago. I hope I'm not stressing you out. I promise there's a good ending to the story because as bad as it was, it changed my behavior going forward, which was a really good thing. So I suggested that I would get the upholsterer to come to their house, but I wanted to pick up a check at the same time. And that's what they said they would do. And that is what they did. But you can imagine a scenario where they didn't actually do that, right? I realized that I had been running my company in a manner I would describe as satisfaction by luck. I got lucky so many times. Few, thank goodness they paid. Few, thank goodness that sofa arrived when it was supposed to. Few, thank goodness the contractor finally finished the job. My days were spent making the sign of cross and saying, thank you, I'm so grateful that got done. And just as often saying, oh, I can't believe this didn't go the way it was supposed to be, right? That is no way to live. And that is certainly no way to run a profitable business and no way to be the boss. That is not how the boss gets to behave. So I found that experience so humiliating and terrifying I was willing to go to any length to make changes. And I came back to my business coach and said, I will do whatever you tell me. I don't care how uncomfortable it is. I don't care if I don't think it's a good idea. You tell me what to do and I will do it. And that is the point at which I changed every policy I have around money. I have not had to ask a client for money repeatedly since 1999 or whatever year that was. It was pretty close to 1999. And that was the first big change I made. I am going to protect myself from ever being in that position again. And that one change, of course, bolstered my confidence just a teeny bit to the point that I could make the next change. So if you're new to Business of Design and you've signed up for Business of Design membership and you go online and you see that there are 100 courses and you don't know where to start, you have options. Start with whatever is your most pressing problem. If it's something more generic like confidence, a lack of confidence, which I had in spades, then I can tell you this. You could spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on coaches to help build your confidence and you might get a teeny bit more confident. Or you could implement the systems we have at Business of Design, and you will have 100% confidence. 
when we say it will transform your business and your life, I'm not using hyperbole and I'm not exaggerating the way newspapers do to get you to purchase the newspaper. I'm saying it will transform your business and that will transform your life. We got a note from a Business of Design member named Alexa. I won't use her last name because I'm not sure we got her permission to do that, but let's say Alexa, thank you so much for your note. It said, I'm so thankful to Business of Design. Today I had a small discrepancy with a window treatment install. And the client who was having a slightly bad day asked me in an agitated tone why the shade wasn't blackout. Then she asked, why didn't I see the quote from the actual company doing the installation and just yours? Is it so you could hide the markup? Alexis says, I quickly reminded the client that I share all my discounts with my clients and I handed her the vendor's invoice on the spot. She didn't even want to look at it once she realized how totally transparent I was. I never would have been able to do that previously. I would have been backpedaling and apologizing and trying to hide the cost. I took responsibility for the oversight and felt so confident in the transparent process. Thank you, Kimberly Selden, for giving me the tools to be the boss. The shade will be corrected, and the client knows that I stand behind my business and operate with integrity. Win, win, win. That's it. That's it right there. What gave me confidence? Systems. Sounds like Alexa's well on her way to being a serious boss player, and I'm so excited for you, Alexa. Thank you for sharing that. We get notes like that, I'm not going to exaggerate and say every single day, but I'm going to say every other day we get a note like that. We're so grateful when you take time to send us a testimonial like that. It means so much to us and it means so much to the rest of the community. When new people come to the site and they see these testimonials from real designers just like them, they know they found a home. I mentioned a second way to begin the transformation, a second way that will prevent you from feeling like you're drinking from a fire hose. And it's actually the easier way. When you sign up for Business of Design membership, begin your journey by taking the course called Step One. There are multiple lessons in each course. The lessons are delivered as videos. There's handouts which you can use in your own business. If it's a handout that I use in my business, we give you a Word document so you can remove my logo and add yours and make other changes if you like. But start with step one, and then this is a really important part. Implement step one. So often people come and they take the course, they watch it all, and then they say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch them all. I'm going to binge watch all of Business of Design's 15-step project management strategy. We're talking about 100 videos, right? I'm going to binge watch them all and then I'll implement. No, it's impossible. You'll never be able to do that. There is scientific evidence to suggest that if you focus on one thing at a time, you will be much more powerful in your commitment to that one thing. You'll implement each step one at a time. We met this amazing woman in Australia. I wish I could remember her name. We actually had a shot of tequila together one night after the Business of Design seminar we did. And she was lovely. And she shared her method for implementing Business of Design's 15-step project management strategy. She devoted time in her calendar once a month to watching a single course. So let's say March, you're going to watch step one. Then she spent the rest of the month implementing step one, just getting it all in order, all the paperwork required, changing whatever documentation she needed to change so she would be ready. And then the next month, let's say April, you take step two and you implement step two. And then the next month, step three. Yeah, it will take you about a year to get through all the courses. That's fine. One year and you will see incremental transformation along the way. In fact, I would say if you implement step one, you'll see dramatic transformation. If you implement step two, and you start using the contract that I've been using, it will change your life. There's no other way to put it. So yes, it is about 
joining Business of Design and becoming a member, but it's also like a gym membership that you're going to have to do those hard push-ups. You're going to have to do the implementation, and we have made it so easy for you to do it. In most cases, it is painless, and you will be on fire if you do it. So yeah, I know how you feel. You've got multiple projects on the go, and every single one of them has moving parts. There's a tremendous amount of stress that goes with doing this work. And there's a tremendous amount of risk and liability. If you are not profitable, if you haven't met the obligation to be profitable for yourself, for the people you work with, for your family, if you haven't met that fundamental obligation, you have none of the benefits of owning your business and you would be better off working for somebody else, which is a real option, you know, really is for, for those people who just do not have an appetite for any risk at all. Working for someone else just makes sense. You'll make more money. You'll have less stress. You'll get three weeks vacation off. You don't have to check in at the office. But for those of you who think, no way, I'm going for it. I am in it to win it. I guarantee you, you can be like one of the 25, 30, 40 people. I can't even remember. It was two hours after the conference. It was a lineup. Two hours. One by one, people came up and told me their stories. And almost all of them started with, I doubled my business. I tripled my profits. I quadrupled my profits. It was crazy. And I know if you were there and you talked to them, they would say, you just follow the steps and it works. I don't have 13 staff anymore. I don't have 45 projects a year. I do have the most profitable business of my career at this point. There are ways to fine tune what you're doing if you're already profitable so you become more profitable. But don't misunderstand me. It's not just about profits. Profits are a symbol that everything else is running smoothly. It's really about being able to do your best creative work which ultimately satisfies your customers. That's what we all want. We want to make our clients happy. We can't do it if we're not tapping into our most powerful creative selves, and we can't do it if we aren't running a smart, efficient, effective business, right? Profit's great. You deserve it. It's a billion-dollar industry. Step up and take your piece of it. And then go out in the world and do great things with it. Spread it around. Your family, your friends, your community. We all need you to be successful. So there you go. Pick a pain point and start there. Start where you are. Or just start with step one. Either way, we're here to support you on that journey. Thank you to Jamie, to Rose, to Alexa, and to every single one of you who have been a support and an evangelist for Business of Design. We can't do this work without you. We've got so much more to do and so many exciting changes ahead. I'm so glad you're here. See you next time. Thank you for being part of the Business of Design community and supporting BOD's mission to improve the industry one design business at a time. It's time for you to take the next step and join Business of Design. Like thousands of design professionals in 50 countries around the world, you'll find the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to dramatically improve your business and transform your life. What are you waiting for? Start today. Thank you for being a part of the Business of Design community. If you love what you hear on the podcast, take the next step by signing up at businessofdesign.com. As our thank you, you'll gain access to Business of Design's 15-step project management strategy, a free introductory course which includes three Business of Design systems you can implement for immediate results. And when you're ready for success, a Business of Design membership, monthly or annual, will dramatically improve your business and your life. What are you waiting for? Together, we will achieve extraordinary results. Start today.